Hello everyone, welcome to A plus BI. This channel is all about complex numbers and in this video we're going to be solving an interesting problem that I kind of adapted from a problem on the internet. The problem was a little bit more complicated, I tried to simplify it anyways. We have two complex numbers, Z and W, such that the absolute value of Z plus W equals the absolute value of Z plus the absolute value of W. Wait a minute, isn't this always true? And the answer is no. This is not an identity. It's only so, uh, true in certain situations. Even when Z and W are real numbers, it's not always true. Think about it. 5 and negative 2, their sum is 3. It's not going to work. Make sense? Good. Now, I'll be presenting two methods. The first method, as always, is a little painful. So bear with me on that, okay? But that's actually going to help you learn a lot of things, especially uh, the locus problems. So we're going to set z equal to guess what? This channel's name. Yes, you got it. A plus b i. And w is just going to have to be z plus, I mean c plus d i. Sorry about that w. You couldn't get the a and b. Now, what is z plus w? Well, if you just add them, z plus w is going to be a plus c plus b plus d i. You add the real parts, you add the imaginary parts. Remember that? If not, please check out the lecture notes. All right? Cool. Now, we're going to go ahead and take the absolute value of this. So absolute value of z plus w is just going to be the square root of, remember, we squared the real part and then squared the imaginary part and then we add them and we take the square root. In other words, it's the distance from zero. Think of this as a point and the Pythagorean theorem gives you that. What about the absolute value of z plus the absolute value of w? Separately taken, this is going to be a squared plus b squared, again from Pythagorean theorem, plus square root of c squared plus d squared. We want these two things to be equal, right? Because they're equal to two things that are equal to each other. Anyways, that's kind of weird, but hopefully you get the idea. Now, here's what we're going to do. We're going to set them equal to each other and expand and expand and expand like crazy. Okay, so this, this is going to become a radical equation with three radicals, so we're going to have to de-radicalize this, okay? Let's see what we can do. We can go ahead and actually square both sides. Don't you think that's going to be helpful? Even though it's going to bring in a radical, we can still solve it. Now, left-hand side is clear, so we can write it as this. And the right-hand side is kind of, think of it as x, minus, x plus y. When you square a sum, you're going to get x squared plus y squared plus 2xy. So it's going to be the product of two radicals. How nice. Okay, left-hand side needs to be expanded. Let's go ahead and do it. a squared plus c squared plus 2ac, and then b squared plus d squared plus 2bd. Okay. And then we're going to write this, a squared plus b squared plus c squared plus d squared plus 2 times this. And let's go ahead and distribute it because we're going to have to do it anyway. So let's just get it over with. Right? Awesome. Now, take a look. A lot of things are going to cancel out. Bear with me. a squared c squared b squared d squared a squared b squared c squared d squared. Not in the same order, but you get the idea. And notice that everything has a coefficient of 2, so I can also divide both sides by 2 and end up with something a little simpler. a c plus b d is equal to the square root of a squared c squared plus a squared d squared plus b squared c squared plus b squared d squared. Oh man, that's crazy, right? But don't worry, we're going to eliminate the radicals one more time. Hit it with the square hammer, and then you'll get rid of the square root. And this is going to give you a squared c squared plus b squared d squared plus 2acbd. And the right-hand side is going to be just the stuff inside the radical, right? the square root sign is going to disappear. And then more things are going to cancel out. This is, I love this problem. This is crazy. Anyways, a squared c squared cancels out. Not everything though, be careful. Only the last, uh, the first and last terms on the right hand side and the first two terms on the left hand side. And this is awesome because look at this. We have a squared d squared plus b squared c squared and then subtract 2ACBD, but write it as 2ADBC because ADBC and ACBD are the same. But notice that this is actually AD minus BC quantity squared. 
it's a perfect square and it's just perfect. Don't you think? Math is perfect. Math is awesome. Math is love. So, what does that mean? AD minus BC squared. Wait a minute. We put everything on the same side, so this is equal to zero. Yes, that means AD is equal to BC. So what? We got that, but what are we looking for? We're not looking for A, B, C, D. We want to find the imaginary part of Z over W, the quotient. Uh-oh, how do you find it? <laughs> Let's find out. What is Z over W, first of all, right? Let's find that out. Well, Z was A plus B, I, and W was C plus D, I. And now we're going to multiply by the conjugates. Z minus D, I. I mean, why do I call it that Z? C. C minus di, and then when you distribute here, you're going to get ac plus bd, and then the imaginary part is just going to be ad plus bc. Wait, bc minus ad. Okay, never mind. bc minus ad multiplied by i, and at the bottom, you're going to get difference of two squares. That's z over w. But what is imaginary part of z over w? If you separate z over w into two pieces, you're going to see the C, the imaginary part clearly, hopefully. Well, the imaginary part is going to be BC minus AD divided by C squared plus D squared. And that's multiplied by I. So the coefficient of I is the imaginary part of Z over W. This is what we're looking for. But what is that equal to? I don't know. Well, actually, I do. Because BC is equal to AD. So BC minus AD is equal to zero. You get it? So the answer is zero. Imaginary part of z over w is zero if absolute value of z plus w is the same as absolute value of z plus the absolute value of w. Great. Let's go ahead and talk about the second method real quick. And I know there is probably a geometric solution to this, which I, we could call third method. Please let us know. But my second method doesn't use geometry. Maybe it uses. Who knows? So here's the thing. If W is KZ, where K is a positive real number, then the absolute value of Z plus W is going to equal the absolute value of Z plus the absolute value of W. I made a claim, so I kind of need to prove it. Now, what happens if K is less than zero? First of all, let's go ahead and take a look. If K is zero, set z equal to 3 plus 4i, and w equal to negative 3 minus 4i, meaning that i used k equals negative 1. And then you're going to notice that z plus w is 0, therefore the equation is not going to be satisfied. So Houston, we have a problem, okay? Because the absolute value of z plus w is going to be 0, but the absolute value of z and w, the, their sum is not going to be 0. It's going to be 10, okay? So, K needs to be positive, and let's go ahead and take a look. So K is positive, W is equal to KZ, K is a real number. Now let's go ahead and prove that this is actually going to equal the sum of the absolute values. Ready? Let's go. I'm going to replace W, uh oh, please notability, stay still. I'm going to replace W with KZ because that's what it is, so Z plus KZ. And then I'm going to factor out a Z, this is going to be Z times K plus 1. And now the, the product can be split. Some cannot always be split, but the product can always be split into two. So the absolute value of k plus 1 times the absolute value of z. Remember, k plus 1 is a positive number because k is positive. k plus 1 is more positive. Some numbers are more positive than others, right? Remember the animal farm? And then, th which means that I can just write it as k plus 1 because k plus 1 is positive. I don't need absolute value. But this is going to be awesome because now you can go ahead and distribute. Look at that. And then I can put the k inside. Uh-oh. That's awesome. And kz is w, remember? Wow. Isn't that crazy? We started off with the absolute value of z plus w, ended up with the absolute value of w plus the absolute value of z, which proves my claim. Okay? Now, so here's the thing. Well, we still didn't find the answer, did we? No. If W is equal to KZ, where K is a positive real number, then Z over W is just going to be 1 over K, which is again a positive real number. And if our number is a positive real number, its imaginary part, uh-oh, is not going to 
exist or it's going to be zero. And this brings us to the end of the video. Thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed it. Please let me know. Don't forget to comment, like, and subscribe. I'll see you next time with another video. Until then, be safe. Take care and bye-bye.